Having studied the concepts of the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average and taken a look at the calculation to better understand how it works, today we look at Kaufman's own advice about how to put the indicator into use. Back straight after this brief message. Darwin X is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The rationale behind the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average is clear, but there are a few gotchas that you need to be aware of in order to get maximum value from this indicator. So let's make a start. In the previous two episodes, we've looked at the use of adaptive indicators in general and why they can offer advantages that standard indicators don't. And we've also specifically looked at the KARMA, or the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average, and looked at how this varies the trend parameter based on the level of noise currently being seen. And the KARMA is specifically designed to select the best trend speed for those existing conditions. So this time we now move on and look at using the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average in a trading context. Also, at the end of this episode, I'll provide details of how you can download the noise indicator package that I mentioned last week. And this will include the Karma indicator, price density, and the efficiency ratio. So, in Kaufman's own words, the most common use for the Karma indicator is in helping determine the trend in the price action. And he recommends you do that using the direction of the Karma. And he talks about using the turning points to indicate the areas for trade entry and exit. So, in other words, if it were to change from a downward to an upward slope, that would indicate a buy and vice versa would indicate a sell. However, before you rush off and do this, there's a warning, and I'll talk about this a little bit later. But let's first of all just start with the basics of that fundamental usage of this indicator. So here, for comparison, we also have the EMA 50, and the blue line indicates the Karma 50 that we're interested in. So using those very simple criterion that we've just looked at, we can see here that the karma turns downwards. So this would be a sell opportunity if you were already holding long and also a sell short opportunity if you wanted to enter a new trade. And then you would hold that until this point where the karma turns upwards. And here you could also take a long trade if you wanted to. And you would close that here at the top as the karma turned down again. So on paper and looking at this very simplistic example, that all seems fairly viable. But before we move on, I just want to make you aware of a particular characteristic of this indicator, which it also shares incidentally with the EMA. And that is that the indicator turns at precisely the point that the price breaks that indicator's line. So as the price comes down here, the indicator will turn down. Likewise, at this point here, as the price goes up through the indicator, that is the exact moment that it turns up. And it shares this with the EMA. So the EMA does exactly the same. And that's actually because the karma is based on an exponential type calculation even though it is varying the number of periods. Now, this is where Kaufman offers some advice and a warning. Because of this particular characteristic, he states that this can interfere with the profitability of this particular type of strategy. 
and we'll see an example of how this manifests itself in a moment. But he offers some advice whereby he says that the use of a filter or a buffer for trade execution will increase the effectiveness of the strategy. And this allows for a minor change in direction to be tolerated without exiting or entering a trade based on that. So let's take a look at this in practice. So we just have the karma indicator here now. And let's imagine that we are entering a short trade at this point here where the karma turns down. Now, if you look very closely at this price action, you'll notice that the price momentarily crosses above the karma at this point. And it's only the wick of the bar and pretty much as soon as it crosses, it then retracts and goes back down below. However, the fact that it did cross means that at that moment in time, the karma would have turned upwards. And if you'd measured that from your algorithm at that point in time, you would have exited the trade. Then look down here, exactly the same occurs. Momentarily, not for long, the price goes above the karma. And so again, here, momentarily, it would have gone upwards, but then it retracts quickly and goes back down. So there's hardly any evidence that it ever actually happened. And it looks like the karma line just continues in a downward slope. But believe me, it would have turned upwards for a short period of time. And so your algo would have exited at this point. And so what Kaufman is effectively recommending here is that a buffer level is used. So on the buy side, this would be above the line and on the sell side, it would be below. And so the rule that he proposes here is that the price actually has to break this level, not the karma itself. And so again, you'd have one here and you'd also have one here. But of course, in this particular case, it genuinely does break this. And so this would now represent the exit of the short trade. Now, he recommends that this buffer value or the yellow line here is based on possibly a percentage of the standard deviation of changes in the karma or alternatively just by some fixed amount based on some other rule that you devise. But I will stress here, you clearly need to thoroughly backtest anything that I'm talking about here, anything that Kaufman is suggesting indeed, before you ever consider trading it live. You need to be convinced yourself that this is going to give you a profitable system and of course need to take ownership for your own decisions. So the last thing I want out of this is for people to go away and just start trading this with these rules. You really do need to do your homework, investigate this buffer level and come up with something that you are fully satisfied with. But in order to help you on your way with that investigation, as I said previously, I'm going to make a noise indicator package available. And this really is in response to the comments that many of you have made on the various episodes in this series requesting things like the price density indicator or the efficiency ratio. So I've decided to put this together, which will, of course, include the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average also. But please note that these are only for MT5. Personally, I no longer use MT4. So I don't put any effort into developing EAs or indicators or, or anything really for that platform. And as you're probably aware, MetaQuotes also are not investing any R&D time now for the MT4 platform, and they themselves are focusing all of their efforts on MT5. So if you are still on MT4, then certainly you should give some time and consideration to upgrading. So that concludes this mini series on noise. And I really hope that you found lots of information in there that's been useful to you and your own trading strategies. Now, in the next series, we're going to move on to something completely different. And here, I'm going to look at the concept of trader evolution. Effectively, the journey that traders take right from that beginning 
where they might be trading simply for a hobby and going all the way through to becoming professional traders who are doing this as their career. Now, as part of this series, I'll be looking at many of the challenges that traders face on that journey. I'll be looking at the problems they encounter, but also what they can do to alleviate those issues. I'll also be looking at how DarwinX specifically can help you along that path. So all that now remains for this particular series is for me to thank you, the audience. We've seen viewer numbers go up during this particular series, and we've also seen the number of subscribers go up. And so thank you to all of you for that. Now, the first episode of this new series will be out next week. So keep an eye open for that. And now until then, trade safe.